So welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about joint pains and trying to work out when should I be seeing a rheumatologist? What are the features that might suggest a rheumatic condition as opposed to other causes? If you'd like to know a bit about what types of doctors most commonly deal with joint pain or how to prepare before you have your first meeting with a rheumatologist, you can check out my other video series in the basic playlist on uh, my channel. I'm going to run through how we can work um, through thinking of our joint pains in five key areas. So the first one is, how do the joint pains come about? The second one is, how long have they been going about? The third is, what patterns would suggest this is inflammatory from non-inflammatory? The fourth is to do with your personal background and any family relevant history. And finally, screening questions that might be asked. Okay, so let's get started. How did these joint pains come about? If you have a clear onset, so you went to the gym, you have a heavy workout, and the next few days you have pain, then it's more likely to be mechanical. You don't need to be a genius to work that one out. Um, but sometimes we try and find a cause because we know we've been doing some exercise when realistically we know that the amount of exercise we've been doing is not enough to cause the symptoms that we've had. It can be helpful if there's been a major incident. So if you have pain and even if you have pain, swelling, redness and heat, which you might think is inflammatory, that came on in the knee joint, say after you fell and twisted it playing football, despite the fact the joint looks inflamed, the fact it came on after such a big injury would potentially suggest you've torn something or damaged something in the knee, such as a meniscus injury. And a rheumatologist might be able to help, at least in taking the history, but they're not the best person in the long term to manage a mechanical injury like a meniscal tear. Um, inflammatory problems, they frequently have a less clear-cut onset. Sometimes they get triggered. They might be triggered by a nasty flu-like illness and then you notice these aches and pains started. But sometimes you look back and you can't really think of when they started. They just were for the last few days, weeks, or even months. Which comes on to the next section. How long have you had the pains? We use words like acute, subacute, and chronic they have definitions. So when it comes to long-term pain, we use the word chronic, and chronic means more than six weeks. Acute being sudden onset and subacute, somewhere between the two. Most of the conditions we treat are in the chronic category. I'll give you the main example that's acute, and that's crystal arthritis. So that can come on really suddenly. You might go to bed one night and wake up, and suddenly there's a really painful shiny, tender, swollen toe, and that would be gout. But rheumatoid and psoriatic arthritis and most of the others don't suddenly come on like that, and they just don't go away. They don't settle down. It's been going on for weeks. Now, if you've got access to a rheumatologist before then, you may well be seeing someone in that subacute phase. Um, now, by definition across most of the global rheumatology practices, we don't want to be making definitive diagnosis of a long-term condition if you haven't had it for long enough. So sometimes if you come in early, we may need to know if this is going to settle down all by itself because some infections can give a short-lived um, joint aches and pains or even a short-lived inflammatory response, and you wouldn't want to be placed on long-term medication for something that was going to clear up all by itself anyway. So, rule of thumb, six weeks or longer and the joint pain's not getting better. That sounds like it could be inflammatory. Okay, next part. What kind of patterns might make me think this is inflammatory compared to mechanical? First thing is the timing of the pain. Inflammatory symptoms are usually much worse in the morning. 
So when you wake up in the morning, symptoms are particularly troublesome. It can be problematic even with mechanical issues, but it tends to settle down much faster. So if you're struggling for at least half an hour, often even longer, maybe 40 minutes an hour, and the joints seem stiff and they feel more swollen or more hot, that sounds more mechanical. If you wake up and the joints are stiff, but you know, five, 10 minutes into the morning, you're back to the baseline level, that sounds more like it's mechanical in nature. Obviously, inflammation may have the features of inflammation, so it's not just painful, but as we've heard, it could be swollen, it could be red, it could feel hot. When I say that, I mean, I would feel the joint as being hot myself, not it feels hot inside the joint, so subjective versus objective heat. Um, are there any other things that might be sounding like it's inflammatory? Well, if moving the joints makes the pain better, that's more common with inflammatory problems. Whereas if certain movements make the pains problematic, that may be more likely mechanical. So if you're going up and down stairs and the knee joints are hurting, maybe that's more osteoarthritis. If you have to wake up two hours early to take your anti-inflammatories and get your hands moving in order to feel like you can get going through the day, that sounds more uh, likely to be inflammatory. And how you've responded to treatment may also help. So if you've taken an anti-inflammatory drug and it was much more helpful than a painkiller, so you took paracetamol and ibuprofen, but ibuprofen was much more helpful, that might suggest it has an inflammatory cause as well. Okay, so the fourth section we talked about was background and family history. So in your medical background, there may be factors that might point towards one or the other. So your age, obviously, is part of it. Um, wear and tear conditions do become more common as we get older. But medical conditions like diabetes or high blood pressure or kidney uh, concerns might make conditions like gout more likely. And if you have a history of autoimmune complaints in other parts of the body, like vitiligo, thyroid disease, or other autoimmune complaints like celiac, then again, there may be a higher chance that you have an autoimmune complaint than if you don't have that in any of your past history. Other medical conditions that might be important include things like psoriasis um, and inflammatory bowel disease. And likewise, We'll ask these sort of questions in your family medical history. So does your family history contain people in your first degree or maybe second degree relatives who have conditions like rheumatoid, lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, and even things like psoriasis? So finally, part of the medical interview is likely to run through screening questions. These screening questions are just to nudge whether you have uh, been suffering from features or symptoms that raise the concern of a rheumatic disease. And I'll separate these into two main areas. One is seronegative screening questions, and the other is connective tissue screening questions. So seronegative screening questions are um, associated conditions with arthritis, a specific kind called seronegative, We've talked about skin psoriasis. That is one of the questions I ask about. Inflammatory bowel disease, things like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Inflammatory eye disease, inflammation of the front of the eye called iritis or anterior uveitis. Inflammation of the tendon where they insert to the bone called enthesitis. So I normally ask about golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendon inflammation, bursitis, and significant back pain, particularly back pain that's bad first thing in the morning. So it sounds like it's inflammatory back pain. I usually ask about connective tissue disease questions, and I might ask about uh, rashes that come out in sun-exposed parts of the skin, like the face, persistent mouth ulcers, severe dryness in the mouth or eyes, alopecia, which is where hair's fallen out and may have left a bald patch behind, skin thickening, Raynaud's, which is where your fingers become a deathly white color in colder weather, 
a history of blood clots, a history of migraines, or a history of pregnancy loss um, and miscarriage. So I run through those questions relatively quickly because there's quite a lot of them, but picking out one or two that might not be significant. So you may have some of those features without it being a concern. But if you had several seronegative features or several connective tissue disease features, it helps me to decide what tests I might organize and also helps to determine whether your symptoms now have a higher risk than being inflammatory or not. So in summary, how did they start? How long were they going on for? What's the pattern and nature of those symptoms? What's the background that you have and your family history has? And what kind of screening questions might be asked? This can all help build a picture of whether your symptoms are more likely to be inflammatory or not, and whether you might need to be going on to a longer term medication. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have any uh, thoughts, comments, or suggestions on the format, or you have any questions that I haven't answered, do feel free to put something in the comments. Thanks.